all right what is going on guys i am tj bringing you a brand new video on my channel and today we're going to be doing a mid-season prediction video i ran a poll on twitter yesterday asking you guys if you wanted to see a mid-season prediction video and the overwhelming amount of you 70 percent about said that you wanted to see that and so you know i'm a man of the people i'm here to bring it to you guys so basically we're just going to be going through the awards that the nfl gives out at the end of the season and we're going to be picking them in the middle of the season just as kind of like kind of a mid-season prediction like at the beginning of the year i, I could have done one of these but I was pretty loaded with school but now that I've kind of gotten into the groove and I can figure out my schedule more uh, and I've watched you know more games and tape and stuff like that I'm able to make a better conclusion rather than just guessing off of not seeing anything so that's what we're going to be doing today uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first award we're going to be talking about today is the MVP award, probably the most coveted award in football. I mean, the Super Bowl is more of a team award, and the Super Bowl MVP sometimes goes to a guy like Malcolm Smith, who ends up falling off, just has one huge game in the Super Bowl, or Nick Foles, who's been a career backup pretty much, but he had to come in for Carson Wentz, and he played like an animal. So I'd say the MVP is more coveted than Super Bowl MVP, and the Super Bowl is necessarily like, it's a team trophy. It's not necessarily an award, but uh, I don't know why I'm rambling about that, but the first award, like I said, is going to be talking about MVP. And my pick for the MVP this year is Todd Gurley. The dude is absolutely going off. He has like 800 rushing yards and about 351 receiving yards, if I'm correct. He's got 15 touchdowns right now. He's on pace for like 2,300 yards and 30 touchdowns, which is absolutely insane numbers. And I know Sean McVay is going to keep giving him the ball because he's the best player they've got on their offense, arguably the best player they've got on their team. But there are some defensive players you could argue for that too. And I just think he's like head and shoulders above everybody else er every other running back in term like just in the nfl like he's the best receiving running back not necessarily in terms of routes but catching the ball and making moves with it and being able to create his own space you know outside of the backfield without running the ball and depending on his offensive lineman he's also really good at catching screens he's also just a really good running back in general if you guys remember he had that really really big breakout rookie season and then two years ago i think he like fell off the face of the earth and everybody was like man what the heck talk really like he sucks blah blah all that stuff and then you you know he's come back and he's been one of the best running backs in the nfl and i feel like he's like like i just said i think he's better than any other running back in the nfl by far Le'Veon bell hasn't played this year so he doesn't count david johnson's been pretty rusty but i feel like that has a lot to do with his offensive line alvin kamar has been really really good but he's nowhere near as good as todd Gurley is i'd say that Le'Veon bell and or not Le'Veon bell that alvin kamar and kareem hunt are probably on the same level but they're like tier two compared todd Gurley is like it's like lebron and KD. like those are the two top pl like tier players in the NBA and then everybody else is a tier below them and that's what I think it is with Todd Gurley he's just a tier above everybody else and another candidate for the MVP that you could consider is the Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes dudes on pace for like five five thousand yards and 52 touchdowns I'm pretty sure which like are very close to record break record breaking seasons which are absolutely insane considering that it's his first full season in the NFL starting that is I mean he had last year but he was more of sitting out learning from Alex Smith learning from Andy Reid learning from Matt Nagy learning from their quarterbacks coach just trying to get acclimated to the NFL and he's made it work this year Andy Reid has really developed a scheme around Patrick Mahomes that's more college friendly air raid style and I feel like that's very trans uh, transcendent in the NFL I wouldn't say that he's the first guy to do that Andy Reid but he's been more of a he's an offensive uh, savant of sorts like he is just a really good offensive mind and he, him and Patty play uh, play very well together they, they they're a good pair that's what I was trying to get at. they're a very good pair and uh, he's made Patty's success just he's made it his name skyrocket and everything like that but a lot of it does have to do with patty and his talent and his understanding of the game and stuff like that but if anybody else is going to compete with todd Gurley for the mvp i think it'd have to be patty mahomes just because of the insane numbers that he's putting up this year so far all right moving on to the next award we are going to be talking about defensive player of the year and to me it's pretty simple there's a lot of people who think it'd be khalil Mack from the bears or jj watt from the houston texans to me it's not even close and it's aaron donald from the los angeles rams now so far we've got two rams winning awards in uh uh, you know my videos so far so we've got Todd Gurley for MVP Aaron Donald for defensive player of the year and I don't even think it's close the dude is the best defensive player in the NFL and you could argue that a corner is more important like Jalen Ramsey who can totally shut down one of the receiving options but it's been proven in the NFL like Jalen Ramsey was quote-unquote shut down Tyreek Hill and then the Chiefs went off and ran the ball all over the place and passed it to Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson and Demetrius Harris and just anybody else so a corner really necessarily in today's NFL when the passing game is so prevalent if you can only take away one option teams have a bunch of other options but Aaron Donald is a defensive tackle obviously for the Los Angeles Rams if you don't already know that I've kind of like just said it so um he has <laughs> so far on the season he's got 10 sacks on pace for 20 which may or may not be the most sacks by an interior defensive lineman in NFL
NFL history. I'm not off the top of my head. That sounds like, you know, a record breaking number for an interior defensive lineman, but the dude gets, uh, he generates a ton of pressure. He's always in the offensive backfield. He manhandles offensive linemen. He just absolutely makes everybody look like they only bench 125 pounds and he's out here benching like 280 or not 280, like 800 pounds. Like he just makes everybody look like they are weak and in comparison to him that they just don't even match up very well. And he is just an absolute force on the inside of that Rams defensive line. Like they are really, really good. I feel like that is also a reason why he gets a lot of like why he gets a lot of numbers is because there's a lot of things that on that Rams defensive line you, you have to focus on like Ndamukong Sue, Michael Brockers, um, and now they've got uh, Samson Ubakum, I think that's his name, uh, Samson Ibukam, and they've got now Dante Fowler who's going to be rushing off the edge, so there's a lot to account for on that Rams defensive line, but teams mainly focus on Aaron Donald, and they still can't stop him, and to me, he's just the best defensive player in the NFL. You could make an argument for J.J. Watt. Earlier in the season, he was really, really going off. He had like five or six sacks, and now he's kind of falling off, but Aaron Donald's production has not stopped since the start of the season and he to me is just better than everybody else the best defender in the NFL by far all right so the next award we're going to talk about is the offensive player of the year and traditionally in the NFL the same guy that wins MVP isn't the same guy who wins offensive player of the year like last year Tom Brady won MVP but Todd Gurley won offensive player of the year and I guess if you're analyzing it like that then I, I my answers for these awards or predictions are gonna be relatively like that like the same player isn't gonna win MVP and offensive player of the year like I think one year Rodgers won MVP and somebody else won offensive player of the year like it's just they usually pick different people so going with that trend kind of following that Patty Mahomes is my offensive player of the year like I mentioned earlier the dude is on record-breaking or close to record-breaking pace with like 5,000 yards and well right now he's got 2,600 yards and 26 or like 2,500 yards and 26 touchdowns so he's absolutely going off he's on pace for like 52 touchdowns at 5,000 yards in his first full starting season in the NFL like those numbers Numbers. like they aren't unheard of like guys like Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady have put up those type of numbers but not in their first like full season as a starter in the NFL it is absolutely insane I'm gonna keep this one short because I already talked about it previously but Patty Mahomes is my pick for offensive player of the year next we're gonna be talking about coach of the year and to me it's pretty easy Sean McVay of the Los Angeles Rams so we have three Rams winning the uh winning different awards this year Todd Gurley with, M with MVP Aaron Donald with defensive player of the year and now Sean McVay with the coach of the year award and to me it's pretty easy a team is eight and O, and as dominant as they are on the offensive side of the ball it's it's got to go to him like the dude is really young I think he's only like 33 or 34 and he's like the youngest head coach in the league he's one of the best offensive minds in the entire league in terms of uh, creativity and ability to run different plays and different schemes and you know setting up Jared Goff to be successful and Todd Gurley to be successful and his wide receivers to be open and stuff like that like the dude just an absolute mastermind and you can't like I feel like if the Rams Rams are able to keep up this winning. I don't think they'll go 16-0. I don't know if they're that good defensively because like they run up against the Chiefs. That's a team that's just as good on offense as they are. I don't know if their defense is going to be able to, uh, you know, stop that type of offense. They had a really hard time stopping Aaron Rodgers this Sunday. They let up like 23 or 24 points. So uh, their defense is obviously a question mark uh, on the back end, at least in their secondary, but their front seven is really, really good. But I feel like if their team keeps up this winning, there's no way that Sean, Va Sean McVay isn't recognized as the best coach in the NFL and to me I think it's easy to pick him Andy Reid could also be mentioned in that because his team is really good Bill Belichick could get it but he's got you know some issues with the NFL I don't think they'll ever give him coach of the year because all the gates that he's had to go through and stuff like that so uh, Sean McVay for me is going to be the coach of the year now we are going to be moving along to the rookies and for my pick for the offensive rookie of the year I have Saquon Barkley running back for the New York Giants to me none of the quarterbacks have performed well enough to earn my vote, I guess I would say, to earn my vote as uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. To me, it's been Saquon Barkley, and it's not even close. Baker Mayfield's played good as of late, but he hasn't really performed great. Uh, Josh Rosen, the same thing. Started out really rocky, but he's kind of turning it around now. Saquon Barkley has been an effective force for that Giants offense since day one. Like, I think, I can't remember how many total yards he had. I, who was that against? Against the Eagles, but he went absolutely off. He had like 239 total yards or something something like that it was just the dude went absolutely off he's really embraced the dual threat running back because like there used to be you know the title was dual threat quarterback where it didn't used to be I mean it is still a title but the, like the dual threat quarterback title is a quarterback who can throw and can run and I feel like a dual threat running back is a running back who can act as a wide receiver or just a receiver out of the backfield an effective one at that and run the ball in between the tackles Saquon Barkley is an athletic freak like the dude ran a 4-4 flat at the combine his thighs are absolutely huge he's got like Earl Campbell legs he can catch 
catch, he can jump, he can run people over, he can break tackles, like the dude just does it all. And to me, it's pretty easy to pick him as the offensive rookie of the year. He's played better than any other rookie, at, at least at a skill position. They're never going to give offensive rookie of the year to like an O-lineman or something like that. But to me, he's been the best rookie on the offensive side of the ball by far this year. Now, moving along to the defensive side of the ball for my defensive rookie of the year, I have Darius Leonard, the linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts. Right now, he leads the NFL with 88 tackles, which is on pace for an insane number of tackles that I can't do in my head while talking and recording at the same time. Uh, but I know that that's a lot of tackles. It's leading the NFL as a rookie. That's pretty, pretty impressive. He was a second round pick by them. And to me, I had scouted some linebackers and I didn't really think that there was any there were, if you were going to take a linebacker in the first round last year, there were definitely guys that you could have taken. You could have taken Roquan Smith, Tremaine Edmonds. And I didn't feel like there was a linebacker that was good enough to take in the second round. It would be a reach to take anybody. But apparently the Colts thought, you know, Darius Leonard is our guy. He's got, out of, I think it was like South Carolina State or something like that. Like he's got the height, weight, speed that you need for a middle linebacker, speed even more so. And to me, I thought he was a reach. He was a guy that I didn't have necessarily as good of an eye on as I did some other prospects, but I knew about him and I was like, okay, he's probably a day two or early day three guy. Like he's a third to fourth round pick, but the Colts saw a better value on him than that. They had a four, uh, second round grade on him and they went out and took him. And to me, I was like, wow, they really reached on Darius Leonard. Like, I don't know how good he's going to be. I don't think he's strong or physical enough to play middle linebacker, but he has proven to me and the Colts that, you know, that pick was definitely worth it. He's leading the NFL in tackles, like I've said, like two or three times. Um, and his side and his height and weight and speed combo, all of that, it makes him an even more effective middle linebacker. He's reading a plays like pro, like a, like a seasoned vet. Like he's out there making reads that I see a lot of veteran middle linebackers struggling with, or that they can't get there because of their speed. Like they're not fast enough, but Darius Leonard has the, a great mind to play middle linebacker and a great vision and to be able to see, you know, where the play is going and to be able to play rec very, very well. He's got speed to get to the ball, make the play and make the tackle or force a fumble or get an interception or something like that. And he's got the physicality to make the play, not miss the tackle wrap up. And to me, he's a complete package. And right now he is my defensive rookie of the year. The next award on my list is comeback player of the year. And this is a very coveted award. A lot of really, really good players have won it. Peyton Manning won it after coming back from, you know, possibly career ending neck surgery and then playing with the Broncos and leading them deep into the playoffs and having a really, really good year. Adrian Peterson won it after tearing his ACL and then coming back the next year and rushing like for eight yards short of the NFL record, which was like absolutely insane. There's a lot of players that could qualify, I think, for this. Deshaun Watson is a player that a lot of people have been talking about as comeback player of the year. Aaron Rodgers, even though he did play a good amount of the season last year, or not really a good amount, he played like what, five or six games maybe? And then he came back at the end of the year, played one game and stuff like that. So, I mean, he could qualify for that, but in my opinion, there's only one guy that I would give this award to, and it'd be Andrew Luck. Right now, I mean, in 2017, when he hurt his shoulder, he looked like, I don't know, it looked like that he may never play football again. His return this year looked really, really doubtful. Uh, we didn't know how good he was going to be, and he's come out and he's thrown the second most touchdowns in the NFL this year. He's on pace for 46 touchdowns, and he's on a Colts team that could sneakily make the playoffs, but I don't know if I'd necessarily count on them to make the playoffs. It's a tough division, that AFC South. They've got a lot of good defenses they got to go up against, and Andrew Luck has played very well this season. I feel like he'll be able to keep that up throughout the rest of the year, and he is my comeback player of the year so far. All right, and now the final prediction that we are going to be talking about in this video today is my Super Bowl prediction. Now, the easy guess, just looking at the records and how the teams have performed right now, the easy prediction for me would be Rams Chiefs, two of the best offenses in the NFL, two of the sketchiest defenses in the NFL. Uh, the Rams, talent-wise and name-wise, have a lot more guys than the Chiefs do, but they're, the defenses are playing very similar, except for, I'd say, the front seven of the Rams has been playing absolutely insane. Michael Brockers, Aaron Donald have been playing really, really well, but I, like being a Chiefs fan, I've witnessed some of the worst playoff collapses in NFL history. Like we were up on the Colts by like, we were up like 35 to 14 going into the like, like second half, like third quarter, something like that. And we end up losing that game. And it was like one of the biggest collapses in postseason history. Already two touchdowns for Brown and they give it to him again. Oh, he fumbles the ball.
we the Steelers like two or three years ago beat us on field goals only they only kicked field goals Chris Boswell had like the game of his life and we couldn't score enough touchdowns to beat them and so that was terrible to watch and then last year we choked against the Titans when Marcus Mariota you know threw the ball essentially to himself because nobody else on that team could do anything goal. Tennessee in dire need of six and not three Mariota Mariota to the line of scrimmage, maybe across the line. It's a flex back to him for a touchdown for the moment. But was he across the line of scrimmage? I believe that's a touchdown. And then, you know, they juiced the clock with Derrick Henry at the end of the game. So I don't necessarily, I, I mean, I trust the Chiefs this year. They've, they've built up a lot of trust in me, but I am prepared to have that absolutely crushed come postseason time. Uh, but this year may be a little different. I have a little more faith in the guys this year and the way that the NFL has shaped out in terms of rules and stuff like that and how the game is being played now. I have more faith than I did last year, especially with who is captaining our offense now and Patrick Mahomes. The Patriots would be a very popular pick as well. And I feel like that may be the more realistic and the the more the safer pick because they are a very good postseason team nobody really touches them in the postseason uh at least in the afc you know some years the broncos get there like a couple years ago the ravens did it but as of lately it's it's pretty much been the patriots run the afc uh and this year i think it i you know brady's aging he's getting up there in age 41 years old you know their defense is really really shaky it always has it's, it's never been a defense that scores a ton of points like the jacksonville defense did last year it's always been a defense that bends but doesn't break it's never been an explosive playmaking defense it's always been just a solid defense but uh, but this year looks a little different this year they've got like three or four good players they've got like stefan gilmore trey flowers malcolm brown on the inside and then that's kind of it to be honest they've got some good safety help but those guys are old their corners aren't necessarily the best their linebackers are really really shaky outside of dante hightower so i don't know how much i trust the patriots either but with all that being said i'm gonna go with the chiefs and the rams in the super bowl i don't know who i'd pick but I don't want to go against the Chiefs, but you know, it's it's a really hard call for me to to make right now, but I'm just going to say that the Super Bowl this year is going to be the Chiefs and the Rams, two of the most high-powered explosive offenses that we've seen in a long, long time. You know, the Rams were, last year, they were the only team in NFL history to go from worst offense to best offense, and they looked like, you know, the next show on Turf V2. So, they're a team that could definitely make the Super Bowl. The Chiefs, they have not an easy schedule, but not a tough schedule on the way out. They've already played the Broncos twice we play the Raiders once twice more we play the Chargers once we play I believe the Browns this week we also have the Seahawks on the schedule so we still have a lot of good teams to play and but I feel like we'll be able to like we as the Kansas City Chiefs I feel like they'll be uh the Chiefs will be able to keep it up and I feel like they'll be you know they'll get a bye probably I feel like they'll have the best record in the AFC and I feel like that is really going to help us because we're always playing in the wild card game and I feel like that never helps our like our our morale I was like oh no we got to be a playing team like we a plan to get into the actual playoffs and i feel like that kind of drags us down but us getting a bye i feel like we'll be well rested we'll have enough energy and enough uh momentum to go into that game whoever we play whether that be like pittsburgh jacksonville houston could be anybody so that's my pick for the super bowl it's going to be the rams versus the chiefs all right, so that is going to do it for the video, guys. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. It really does help out the channel. And let me know down in the comment section below what you think about my award predictions. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that somebody else should get this award or that award? Whatever the case may be, let me know down in the comment section below. And yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. I'm TJ, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.